Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can request availability from your teammates so that everybody knows what everybody else's intentions are throughout the team for the coming week. So for example, I may want you to know that I plan on being in the office on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that helps everybody coordinate those uh, in-person gatherings as well as any virtual events a little bit better. So to get started to power the whole solution, we do need a SharePoint list underneath it all. So we're going to go to our uh, demo IT site here, click on new and click on list. And it's a very simple list, so it won't take long to set up, but we're just going to choose the blank list template. For our blank list, I'm just going to call this team availability and create. All right, now first thing I'm going to do is add a new column. This is going to be for the employee who's letting us know when they're going to be in. So I'm choosing person and next. Okay, we're going to call this column employee, and I will show profile photos, just a personal preference there. And just for my list to make it look nice, I'm going to put that first. So it'll be the employee followed by their availability. Now the default column we get out of the box is called title. So I'm actually going to go in and change that column. We're going to rename it to Monday. There we are. We're going to add another column. You can guess where we're going here. It's going to be a text column for it Tuesday. You repeat that until you have columns for Monday through Friday. All right, so we've got our list. Now we just need to add who the employees are who will be asking for their availability. And then eventually we'll see their uh, responses listed here in this list each week. All right, so now that I've entered some employees in my list, I can see I've got blank Monday through Friday, except for that title column, which defaults to saying untitled uh, until we get some content in there. But for now, all you have to have are those employee names. Now, next up is the Power Automate flow, and I've gone ahead and built it, but you can pause the video wherever you want to uh, to make sure that you can set it up how you want. But this is a scheduled flow with a recurrence of every Friday at 10 a.m. So that's just uh, a frequency of once a week, making sure that we start that at 10 a.m. And of course, you can change that to whichever day and time you like. Uh, the next step is getting items from that list that we just created. So make sure your site address is that site where you created it. The list is, of course, that list. And the only other thing I did here in the advanced options, if you expand where it says uh, show advanced options, is I added a filter query just to prevent a, a potential error you may come across, which is when there's a row added to your list without an employee there. So we want to make sure that we're only pulling items from the list where we did enter an employee to prevent those kind of uh, blank errors. And all you have to do is put the internal name of that uh, column. So in my case, I called it employee and the internal name is also employee. And I say NE for not equals and null for empty. So the employee field isn't empty. Uh, so next up, I have an update item step and you can ignore the apply to each for now because as soon as you start working with the update item, it'll put it in that apply to each for you. So ignore the apply to each and add this update item step. Once again, you're going to choose that site where we created the list. You'll choose that list that we created. But for your ID, I'll just show you what we did from scratch here. In your ID field, you're going to use the dynamic content dialog that pops up when you click inside that field and just choose the ID that appears under the get item step. Okay, so ID, you pop that in there. And at this point, that's when it would have put it in the apply to each for you automatically. Now down here, I've just put requested with a little hourglass here. So you can get that from my blog post if you just want to copy and paste it, but it's going to show the hourglass space requested uh, for every day of the week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Notice that I left employee blank because employee is already there and we don't want to change it. Just every week we want to reset Monday through Friday to requested so that we know that we asked. Now, next up is the actual message the user gets. So this action is called post adapt adaptive card and wait for a response. We want to post that as the flow bot. So you can choose that for your first box, post it in a chat with the flow bot. So they'll just be chatting with our bot. And then the message you can also copy and paste from the blog post. That's the easiest way to do it. You don't have to change hardly anything about this. In fact, the entire thing is good to go as is, but you may want to change this right here. Find the URL because this can be your company logo. So just find a publicly available, uh, so not behind any kind of login screen, but some kind of publicly available logo for your company and put its URL right here so that that'll show up inside of your uh, message. 
So otherwise, everything else here is generic. It's just going to ask people uh, to choose whether they're in office, they're teleworking, or they're out of office for each day of the week. And the rest of that is just fine. So after that, inside of that apply to each still, we're adding more actions. We have an update item again, and we also have a get items again. So add update item, and this time, once again, it'll be the same site, the same list, uh, and then ID uh, will also be coming from the apply to each. So I'll show you once again how that works. If we click in the ID field, we get this dynamic content out to the side, and we're going to choose the ID from get items, just like we did before. Same exact thing. And now what's different is for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're going to choose dynamic content, but this time it'll be purple for Microsoft Teams. And you should, as long as the previous step went correctly, see Monday as an option right here. So we'll choose Monday from our Teams purple dynamic content. Repeat that for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then for your employee claims, we don't have to update it here. You can actually leave that blank just like we did before. But if you wanted to, you could populate that again. So next up, we've got get items two. So just another SharePoint get items step, same site, same list, lots of repetition here. This time though, what we're doing is after the person submits their availability, we want to show them what everybody else has said so far. So we're going back to the list and we're getting everybody's to share with this person. For this filter query, once again, copy and paste from the blog post for the easiest way, but I'm saying the column that's that's called Monday uh, is not equal to requested, which is my default value that we put in there earlier in the flow, and it's not equal to null. Now, uh, in my case, the internal name of my column, earlier I was talking about internal names, the internal name of mine is actually title because I used my title column as the name of that uh, or for my Monday column. So I'm going to rename mine just so you can see it here correctly. Um, but if you created a new column called Monday, you're going to call yours whatever that internal name was. If you followed my video to the letter, then yours will also actually be title instead of Monday. All right, and then my next step is create HTML table. And for my from, I'm going to choose my value and my dynamic content from my get items to step. There we go, so I've got my value in there. And then for employee, I like the display name for this. So I'm going to look at my dynamic content over here for display name. There we go, employee display name. And then for the rest of them, Monday through Friday, it's all going to be very similar. We're going to click into the field, use our dynamic content, and find the matching column name from, once again, there we go, this get items to area. Just make sure you stay under that heading. That's very important here. So as long as you see the previous step's name right here at the top, and you're choosing the days of the week from under that, you'll be good. We're being a little more careful here because at this point, you have lots of dynamic content throughout the flow to choose from. And if you choose it from the wrong step, you may create an error and not get what you're hoping for. So we've got Monday, and I'll just repeat that for Tuesday through Friday. All right, so we've got all those in there. Now, one more step in the flow, but then we have one more very important thing to do after that. So our last step in the flow, still inside of that apply to each up here that we can see. I'll just show you real quick. In fact, we'll collapse this and save ourselves some scrolling. Uh, but you can see we're still inside the apply to each, the entire part of the last part of the flow anyway. So down at the very bottom of the apply to each, we're doing a post message in a chat or channel. And in that step, once again, it's with the Flowbot. Chat with Flowbot. There we go. So I've got employee email in there. I put a message in here. It's pretty generic. The only thing that's unique about this is in my um, here's the team overview for the next week. I put the output from the previous step. Not hard. You just click where you want to show that table of next week's availability. Use your dynamic content, and you'll see output from that create HTML table step. Yeah, that's just going to put this in the body of my message. Now, uh, down at the bottom, I just put one more message, optional, of course. I say you can view the most up-to-date list and make changes in the team availability list, which is actually a link to our SharePoint list where they could view it in real time. So even though we're sending a message at one point in time and saying, here's what we have so far, I'm giving them one click to take them to the full list where people could still be submitting their availability. Okay, I also let people edit that list, so they might use this to edit whatever they submitted. If something changes and they're suddenly going to be working from home one day, uh, they can go to that list and update it directly. All right, so that's the message. Now I mentioned there's one more very important thing that we want to do, and that's on the apply to each. So before you save, 
go up to the top of your apply to each, use the ellipsis or the three dots in the upper right, and go to settings. Okay, and then for your concurrency control, turn that on. And what I did was I went with 20 because on my team, we don't have more than 20 people. So set your degree of parallelism to the number of uh, people on your team or more just to play it safe. And that way it's gonna ask everybody at once uh, what their availability is. If you forget this step or miss this step, it's going to ask one person and wait for them to respond before it asks the next person. So we wanna make sure that we turn on concurrency control and set that parallelism to whatever number would cover all of your, your team members. All right, when you're done with that, click on done and then you can save your flow. Let's go ahead and give it a test and see how it works. Okay, so we're going up to test. We'll go to manually, we'll go to test again. And run flow. All right, so now we can watch it happen in real time here. Now I'll bring Teams over so we can watch for that message to come in. All right, we can see I just got a card here, so we'll go check that out. All right, so Power Automate wants to know uh, what the best way to collaborate is throughout next week. So I'm going to look for Monday and say I'm going to telework. I'll be in office Tuesday. I'm on leave Wednesday and Thursday, but I'll be in office on Friday. So I just choose for each day of the week. Now the layout is customizable. Um, I chose this way because on smaller screens and devices, if you put just one day per week in a row, it doesn't fit and it looks really bad. So I, I went with this layout where I broke the week into two rows just so that it would display better on a smaller screen. All right, so I've made all my decisions for next week and I'm gonna submit that for my team. It's going to go out, remember, with the flow and check the entire list to see who's responded so far and share that availability with me. And you can see pretty quickly it says, here's what we have so far. Megan shared hers. Nobody else has shared theirs yet. Now I'm going to open up somebody else's teams and we'll submit another one. All right, so now I'm pulling up another coworker in that team's uh, chat in Microsoft Teams and we'll see if she received anything. Okay, so I can see uh, here it's called Workflows instead of Power Automate. We're in the web version of Teams, which is a little bit different, but we want to see what it's like in different experiences. Uh, even in the web version, though, I see my company logo. I've got my days of the week, and Miriam's also going to respond now, and she'll say in office, in office, telework, telework, and in office. There we go, and we'll submit. And once again, it's going to go out to that list in SharePoint. It's going to get everybody who submitted theirs so far, and it's going to share that with Miriam in no time at all. So you can see that's very quick. There's no cuts in the video there. And it says, uh, Megan and Miriam have submitted theirs. Here's what they said. And then once again, I've got that link where I can go and make changes or view everybody's in case I want to look at this an hour from now and see if anybody else submitted theirs. But right away, Miriam can see, oh, okay, Megan and I are both in the office on Tuesday and Friday, so maybe we could plan this project or this meeting uh, for those days where we could really make the most of that face-to-face -face time. Um, or maybe I know that uh, Megan's going to be out Wednesday and Thursday, so those days that I'm teleworking, maybe I could work on things that are independent, right? All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, we've got that survey going out. We've got those results rolling in. Let's just go ahead and check that list real quick. All right, and then looking at our list here, we can see that uh, Megan and Miriam have submitted theirs, and it looks nice here in a SharePoint list, but we can also see people who haven't responded. So we've got Patty and Isaiah, who we've only requested from. So it looks really nice. You can see how this is easy for people to come in and edit after the fact, but that convenience of having it in Teams makes it so that they can just be in their natural flow of work and go ahead and respond to a chat message, basically just a form that they get every single week on a schedule, and then get that digest as well as that always available list they can go to at any time. So good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.